For Comedy Hype News, I'm Ramil Thompson. In every culture, there are films that stand the test of time for their impact and influence on the community. What makes those movies stand out are the stories that they tell, along with the characters we know and find relatable. When it comes to Friday, we knew the neighborhoods of South Central. We knew the people in the neighborhood that represented Smokey, Big Worm, Ezel, Pastor Cleaver, and Felicia. These characters have stood the test of time, which is why Friday is seen as one of the most culturally significant pieces of art, as well as one of the most culturally popular films. The 1995 film is an A-list cultural classic and has been touted as one of the funnier films in modern history. Another famous character that remains a huge part of the franchise was neighborhood Billy Debo, played by none other than actor and former pro wrestler Tommy Tiny Lister. The role catapulted Lister into instant fame and made him a recognizable face around the world. Lister's convincing performance has led to much acclaim, with many quoting much of the film from his character. Lister's menacing frame, unique appearance, and groveling voice has earned him a place in show business with a career that touches five different decades, making him a part of our favorite moments growing up, which is why Tiny Lister will always be unforgotten. Tommy Tiny Lister was born on June 24, 1956 in Compton, California to Tommy Lister Sr. and Mildred Fay Lister. Tommy's retina has been detached since he was born, blinding him in his right eye, giving him the unique appearance that helped him stand out. Tommy stayed away from the violent street life of gangs and drug dealing in favor of religion and western movies, which would influence him to become an actor. Standing at an imposing 6 foot 5 inches tall, along with a well-built frame, Tommy Lister was well equipped for athletic competition. Once he completed high school, he attended Palomar Junior College until he transferred to Long Beach City College for his sophomore year. College is also where he would get the nickname of Tiny, an obvious oxymoron referencing his massive build. When asked about his nickname, Lister replied, I like the name Tiny because there's nothing macho about the name. Tiny. It can't be a prideful or arrogant name. While in college, he excelled in the shot put competition, breaking his school record seven times in one year, becoming a national champion in 1982. Lister's acting career officially began when he made an appearance in the 1984 show, First in Ten, playing a character by the name of Otis. The following year, in 1985, is when Lister would make his film debut in the movie Runaway Train as a security guard. Throughout the rest of the 80s, Lister would continue to have supporting and bit roles in notable films such as Eight Million Ways to Die, Beverly Hill Cop 2, and No Holds Barred. As mentioned earlier, while coming up as an actor, Lister was also known for his time as the wrestler Zeus in the WWE. His appearance in the 1989 film No Holds Barred, a film produced by WWE, shocked a lot of people in the world of wrestling. Tommy played Zeus, a rival wrestler opposite of Hulk Hogan. Hogan was impressed by Lister's acting ability and was keen on him becoming an act in the WWE. Subsequently, Tommy was given a short-term deal with WWE as his film character of Zeus. His wrestling character was often portrayed as dominant as he was normally unaffected by many competing wrestlers' offensive maneuvers. Lister used the character's moves to help with real-life wrestling matches and was embroiled for a storyline run with Hulk Hogan. After a short time being involved in a feud with Hulk Hogan, Hogan would get the better of him on two separate occasions. Following this defeat, Tom took a retirement from the WWE. Following his stint with the WWE, he had some brief runs in World Championship Wrestling and the World Wrestling Council before refocusing himself to acting. Lister's first major job once he returned to acting came in an appearance on the classic show, The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air in 1991. The appearance was brief but highly comedic and memorable and gave Lister his most memorable role until that date and familiarized audiences even further with him. In the 1990s, there was a surge in popular African-American culture in reference to TV and film, and Lister heavily benefited from this. A notable filmmaker from this period is Mario Van Peebles, whom Lister worked with in the 1993 cult classic film, Posse. This film is highly notable for being one of the few African-American Western movies, a fact that no doubt intrigued Lister. Lister was also excited he got to work with childhood idol Woody Stroll on the film as well. The next role Lister took on would be the one that defined his career as an actor and as a public figure, none other than the role of Debo in the 1990 film Friday. The film is Lister's breakout role and is considered his signature character. The character has gone on to become one of the most popular in the film and solidify Lister's place in Hollywood. In a 2015 interview with Vlad TV, Lister revealed that he doesn't mind still being referred to as Debo because people like it so much. People want to see that character. I pulled that from Big U. I used him as my background as how I wanted this character to be perceived because the whole thing about how bad this guy was is when Ice Cube put that gun out on him and he said, what you gonna do with that besides make me mad? That was cold blooded. That was it for me. Debo is Big U, can't be stopped. In that same interview, Lister said that before filming, he took a look at the cast and he and Cube knew that the movie was going to be something special. Friday spawned a sequel in which Lister reprised his role as Debo looking to get revenge on Craig. He does not appear in the third film of the series. In that same interview, he was asked why he isn't in Friday After Next. Lister responded, You gotta ask Ice Cube that question. Maybe he wasn't feeling me. I don't know. 
but Cube has always been good to me. He put me in a Coors Light commercial, got me about 70,000. Lister went on to explain that Debo and Damien, who was played by Terry Crews in the third film, were supposed to join forces in a potential fourth Friday movie. Unfortunately, Ice Cube's strained relationship with New Line Cinema and the eventual passing of several crucial members of the Friday series would put a hole on the fourth movie. There is no doubt that the Friday movies catapulted Lister's career to new heights. After the blockbuster success, Lister went on to appear in more commercially successful projects. He appeared in the 1996 cult classic film A Thin Line Between Love and Hate, starring Martin Lawrence as the character Tyrone. He would also collaborate with Ice Cube again in Cube's directorial debut, The Players Club, in addition to a role in the fellow cult classic film I Got the Hookup, and the 1997 film The Fifth Element. He also worked with rap legend Tupac Shakur in the 1997 film Gang Related. Another detail many fellow actors and viewers have noted about Lister is his acting range. Having range in the industry is important to consistent work, and Lister proved this in his career by having over 200 credits in a career spanning nearly 40 years. Outside of his stellar acting career, Lister remained passionately devoted to his faith as an evangelical Christian and regularly does public speaking events promoting his faith. His dedication to his religion paid off from the very beginning as it kept him away from street life and helped him remain focused in his acting career. To reach your full potential as a man, the way I thought about it in growing up in Compton was you have to have the spirit of Jesus Christ intervene and help you step into your purpose and destiny. For me to reach playing the black president in a $100 million film, I needed some spiritual help. According to an article by Tanya Mustafa for The Sun, Tommy met his wife Felicia Forbes in 2003 while working on the film Blast. Felicia was also heavily religious as she worked as a missionary in Cape Town. This was a quality Lister always wanted in a wife. Apparently their romance grew very serious very quickly as they were married that same year in Cape Town at the luxurious home of famous construction developer Falk Heron. The union produced Lister's only known child, a daughter named Faith Grace Lister. The couple's marriage began to get rocky in the last two years of Lister's life. According to the aforementioned Sun article, in 2019, a video altercation between the two went viral in which Lister claimed he had an outside girlfriend who allegedly recorded the video. Police were involved, but no further charges were dished out and the party seemed to have moved on without further conflict. Tommy and Felicia separated, but never divorced. This wouldn't be the only time Tommy was involved with the law as he pled guilty to conspiracy to commit mortgage fraud in 2012. According to TMZ, Lister admitted he and a few others swindled mortgage loans from banks using falsified documents. An excerpt from the TMZ article states, Lister admitted he and his co-conspirators collected mortgages worth $5.7 million and defaulted on all four, costing the lenders $2.6 million. He also admitted to withdrawing over $1.1 million in loans using the properties as collateral, which he never paid back. All in all, Lister has admitted swindling banks out of $3.8 million. This incident will result in some jail time for Lister. He was let out on bail in 2014. After his release, he then said one of his most famous quotes. What's so cool about our God and our government is that you can make a mistake and they will forgive you if you're just a good person and doing right. His devout belief in his religion seemed to be a driving force much of his life and is regularly referenced as what Lister used to get him through tough times. Throughout his life, Lister seemed to have periodic health issues. At age 55, he was officially diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. According to sources, Lister contracted the COVID-19 virus in August of 2020 but overcame it. In December 2020, Lister fell ill again with COVID-like symptoms. In the span of a week, his symptoms escalated and sadly he was found deceased in his home on December 10th at the age of 62. Many were shocked and saddened at the sudden passing of Lister as many grievances and condolences were given. Upon the news of his passing, many celebs expressed warm sentiments for Lister. Ice Cube showed his support for the actor by tweeting the following, RIP Tiny Debo Lister. America's favorite bully was a born entertainer who would pop into character at the drop of a hat terrifying people on and off camera, followed by a big smile and laugh. Thank you for being a good dude at heart. I miss you already. Months later, his cause of death was revealed to be heart disease. Tommy Tiny Lister was a multi-talented individual and highly diverse actor. His trademark appearance along with imposing size made him a Hollywood favorite for decades. With a 40-year career, it is safe to say that Lister found and served his purpose. He worked with several different entertainment legends across the board, from Quentin Tarantino, Samuel Jackson, Jackson and Michael Jackson. Despite his normally aggressive characters, Lister had a huge heart and is fondly remembered by many for his great acting performances and for being an all-around great guy by those who knew him, which is why Tiny Lister will always remain unforgotten. For Comedy Hype News, I'm Ramil Thompson.